And I yield back to balance my time. Gentleman yields back. Chair recognizes uh, the gentleman from New York, Mr. Goldman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to move quickly um, through a couple different questions. Uh, we established earlier credibility matters, uh, certainly for witnesses who appear um, before us. Um, Mr. Boyle, do you know who Cash Patel is? I do. Uh, have you received any money from Cash Patel or his organization? I have. Um, when you previously met with the majority members and or majority staff of this committee, was Cash Patel present with, for that meeting? No. Uh, to your knowledge, has Cash Patel ever spoken to the committee members on your behalf? Not that I know of. Not that you know of? Was anyone present for your previous meetings with committee members and staff uh, on the majority uh, that were not members of this committee or staff of this committee? My counsel. Your counsel, anyone else? I, I don't think so, no. Are you, uh, is Cash Patel helping you uh, f finance your counsel? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, Mr. Friend, what about you? Uh, are you? Do you know Cash Patel as well? Uh, yes. And did you receive any money from Cash Patel? Yes, he gave me a donation last November. A donation? Yes. Are you a charitable organization? I was an unpaid definitely suspended man trying to feed his family and his reached out to me and said he wanted to give me uh, a donation. Did, uh, did he have any, uh, was he present for any of your meetings with committee members or staff? No. And how many times did you meet with the committee members or staff prior to your transcribed interview? I never met with them prior to my transcribed interview. Did you speak to them on the phone? <clears throat> yes. Okay, this is, all right, so you, you spoke to them on the phone. <clears throat> yes, I spoke to them on the phone, uh -huh. corresponded, uh, Did you provide phone. documents? Yes, I gave them my written uh, declaration. Uh -huh. Did they ask you uh, whether they could share that with the minority? I don't know. At the time, I don't believe they were actually in the majority. Did they ask you whether they could share the documents? I don't remember if they did or didn't. Um, I, I want to focus a little bit on um, that SWAT case that you mentioned, Mr. Friend. Um, where the SWAT team was used to make an arrest of someone associated with the domestic violent extremist group. That was not your case? It was, that was a case that was within my office. The Joint Terrorism Task Force sort of ran all the cases together. Okay. Well, did you work on that case? My name is on it. I did not perform work for it. Got it. And what evidence did you have that this defendant had offered to surrender to the FBI? The evidence I had was in his conversations with the individuals he from my office who we spoke to, he said that he would cooperate. So he never he said he would cooperate with the FBI, but he never told you that he would surrender upon a, a, to an arrest. Uh, Those I, are two different things you agree, right? No, I wouldn't. I, if somebody told me that if you need anything from me, just let me know, I'll cooperate, I would interpret that to mean I could reach out to them if I had a criminal charge. Really? Yes. Interesting. All right, that's not certainly not my experience. Um, Mr. Allen, um, you, uh, you passed around information uh, to other members of the FBI related to January 6th, is that right? Uh, yes, sir. And you were admonished by your supervisor not to do that, is that right? I was not, sir. You were not. So when it says here in the FBI's letter to Mr. Jorman of yesterday that your supervisor admonished you to stop circulating these materials on multiple occasions, you're saying right now that the FBI is lying to this committee? That statement that they wrote is inaccurate. Okay, did you write a? Uh, did you write to your um, colleagues to quote exercise extreme caution and discretion in pursuit of any investigative inquiries or leads pertaining to the events of January sixth? Yes, I corresponded with my uh, teammates. Did, did you write that? Yes, I wrote those words okay. in the correspondence. And that was. Uh, that was after you had been admonished not to send uh, information about January 6th, right? I was not admonished to not send okay. information. But you do agree that uh, your personal opinion should not influence your official duties, don't you? No, you should be objective and analytical in all the, you know, decisions and information. No, I, that was my, sorry, that was my question. Your, your personal views should not influence your official duties. No, you should be objective in doing the conduct of your job. And now, Mr. Friend and Mr. O'Boyle, I don't have much time, but you, you agree that you were field agents, correct? Correct. And you understand chain of command, do you not, Mr. O'Boyle? I do. 
Right. So that if you make a suggestion to a supervisor and your supervisor overrules you, um, that's the nature of the business, isn't it? Not if it's a violation of a law. You, and you, you make decisions about whether grand jury subpoenas should be served or not as Tom a the, field Tom, agent <laughs> of the FBI? Tom, the gentleman is I have a reasonable belief I can make a protected disclosure, which is what I've done. Okay, but do you think you make those decisions? I'm the gentleman decisions? is expired. Gentleman yields back, chair recognizes himself. Mr. Mr. O'Boyle, why do you think they came down on you so darn hard? Deep down, what do you think their motivation is? I think they want to, the agency as a whole wants to get rid of people who simply just don't toe the line that they want. They don't want critical thinkers. They don't want uh, people who raise valid questions to their chain of command. They want to send a message, don't they? Absolutely. They want to make you an example, don't they? Yes. And they don't care. They, they want to send that message so hard, so strong, they don't care that you'd served six years in the Army, member of the 101st Airborne, took enemy fire, was selected for a special new unit they were putting in Quantico. They wanted to send such a message that they said, if we can get this guy, if we can get this guy to be quiet, we can get everybody to be quiet. That's what they were doing, wasn't it? Yes, sir, especially since I had just had a, a baby who was two weeks old and we had just sold our house. Just, so they, to put, just to put the emphasis on it, they said, we're gonna do it the day he arrives. The day we've, we've worked with him, we selected him, he's done a great job in the FBI, he served our country, took an oath to the Constitution, took an oath to defend this country. He's gonna move, we're gonna send all his stuff in this van to this moving, we're gonna do that. When the day he arrives, we're gonna suspend him. We're not gonna let his family get their belongings. We're not gonna let him get his clothes for his kids, his winter coats for his children. We're gonna send a message. And they did. They suspended you. They took your pay. They don't let you get health insurance. They made life miserable for you to send a message. Because you know what? You reported on the first big screw up they had in this administration. The first big one. You reported to us as a whistleblower about the school board's issue. The, 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 the Biden administration, they thought this was gonna be a win for them politically. They thought it was gonna make Terry McAuliffe governor of Virginia. Backfired on him and you reported. Would it surprise you, Mr. O'Boyle, to know that the FBI told us they looked at 25 parents who were reported on this snitch line that was set up with this memorandum from the Attorney General? They looked at 25 parents. How many do you think of them were actually ever investigated and prosecuted? How many think were, were, were prosecuted, Mr. O'Boyle? If I had to guess, I'd say zero. 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 And you came to us because you say this is wrong. This is wrong to set up some federal snitch line, some neighbor calling in because they don't like their, their neighbor's politics, reporting to the FBI, go investigate these parents. They said, we got to get this guy. We got to get, we got to get Garrett O'Boyle because you had the courage to step forward. And it's not just with this issue because we have the memorandum from the Richmond field office about Catholics, right? If you're pro-life, pro-family, and you're Catholic, look out. The FBI wanted to put people inside the church, inside the parish, to spy on fellow citizens. Does that surprise you, Mr. O'Boyle, that that actually happened in the Richmond field office? It doesn't, not anymore. Scary. And you know that memorandum, by the way? It was signed off by five people in that office. One of them was the chief division counsel, a lawyer, a lawyer who supposedly went to law school and probably had a course on the Constitution, signed off on that memorandum. Scary stuff. Scary stuff. Mr. Allen, you served 20 years. You had a security clearance for 20 years. You served our country as well, right? Yes, sir. Honorably discharged. Yes, sir. Won medals from the Marine Corps. Yes, sir. And they came after you too, didn't they? And you simply did. Your, Mr. Goldman just asked you a few questions. You were simply doing your job. Yes, your job. Your job as an analyst is to compile information, open source information, present that to your colleagues so they're fully informed about the case. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's and you did that job, didn't you? Yes, sir. You followed your oath, right? Yes, sir. You adhere to the rule of law. Correct, sir. You're consistent with the Constitution, just like the oath you took when you signed both as a, a, a serve our country in the military and at the FBI. Yes, sir. And you did the same thing, didn't you, Mr. Friend? Yes, sir. And yet you felt the full weight of the federal government come down on you guys. And of course, they timed it perfectly. They sent the letter to us yesterday. We knew they would. We knew it was going to happen that way. And as Mr. Boyle said earlier, he's getting his hearing tomorrow, right, Mr. Boyle? That's when they tried to schedule it. We've not heard back. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your service to the country. Mr. Bishop was right. The poise, the, the way you've handled yourself, 
the gentleman way you've handled yourself here, the way you've served our country, it, it, it does not go unnoticed. The American people appreciate what you've done for our country and what you are doing for our country. God bless you. I yield back. Now recognize the, uh, the, the ranking member of the Virgin Islands.